Thank you for the invitation to be here and thank you for your interest in this topic. I'd like to share um, a case study on theoretics that I believe illustrate uh, how difficult it is to make decisions or to make the right decision. My background is in geosciences. I, I started my career as a mining geologist and I work in three different continents. And um, in 2013, I started serving the European Federation of Geologists as president. I was there from 2013 to 2019 as president. And the, the EFG, the European Federation of Geology, represents uh, professional geologists from all over Europe, roughly around 50,000 geoscientists working uh, in Europe and abroad. Um, the conflict minerals topic is something that uh, came to light um, in, let's say, the beginning of this century. In fact, um, with the rise of the free trade or liberal uh, trade, uh, at the end of the 20th century, many countries um, had an opportunity to develop, but many others with uh, no institutional capacity and with uh, an important uh, geological endowment, such as the Democratic Republic of Congo, were facing a curse, this minerals uh, endowment curse. Um, in the DRC, of course, the many years of civil uh, decades, in fact, of civil war just uh, uh, destroyed all the infrastructures and the poor people that was having this opportunity of having a better life by extracting some minerals that were in high demand were basically uh, facing problems because uh, the activity became controlled by, by criminals. And these criminals um, were basically using the, the profit coming from the minerals extraction to fund their activity, to buy more weapons. And in the process, they were fighting with each other, attacking villages, attacking, uh, killing men, um, raping women, abducting children. So it was, and it is still, um, uh, one of the worst nightmares that you can imagine. Policymakers, of course, became aware of that. The first to react were the the White House in 2010, with the publication of the Dodd-Frank Dodd Act, and also the OECD uh, in the same year with the publication of the due diligence guidance, basically to try to curb the imports of conflict minerals. But in Europe, the, the person that brought this, or to put this topic on the spotlight, was Denis Mukwege. Uh, Dr. Mukwege is a surgeon. He received the Sakharov Prize in 2014, uh, also the Nobel Peace Prize in 2018. And if you have time, please check on the internet the speech he made uh, when he received the Nobel Peace Prize. And it's impressive um, how strong is the message that he delivers, basically um, telling people that you need to be aware of the gadgets that you buy because these gadgets have many of them have minerals that are coming from the DRC and this is an expression of the huge uh, suffering and the blood that uh, the people in this country is paying for us to, to, to have these minerals. But uh, when he received the Sakharov Prize in 2014, this also created traction for some, let's say, political movement at European level. And the European Federation of Geologists joined other groups that were lobbying for the publication of some guidance. In fact, it was published three years later, a directive um, that was the, uh, trying to curb the imports of minerals coming from conflict areas to Europe. And the EFG joined that, that effort, as I said, but I have never been in the DRC before. So uh, I had the opportunity to visit the country in 2017. Uh, five months uh, after the approval of this directive and the reality that I found was different from what I expected. First, it's important to, to, to point out that the DRC is a very big country and by very big, I mean its area is the, roughly half the size of the area of the European Union countries all combined. Um, and because it's a huge country with no infrastructure, there are many uh, rebel groups fighting with each other. Uh, roughly, you have just in these uh, two provinces I highlighted in red, the North Kivu and South Kivu, you have 60 or around 60 uh, armed uh, rebel groups 
but in the whole country you have around 200 countries. So the area I visit was not close to the Great Lakes region, it was in the south, uh, in the province of Katanga, and as I said, I found a different reality. And the reality I found was that of farmers uh, that were working, uh, let's say, part-time, so part of the year they were doing farming, when the, the raining season came, they moved to, to these uh, mining sites and they moved with the family. So they were not leaving women and children behind because first there are no schools or any type of infrastructure uh, where they can be kept safe. And uh, secondly, if they were left behind, they probably could be ended dead or raped. So every the family was together. The women were working uh, with, the, with the men. Um, in, in these mining sites and basically um, this was like a complement of, uh, of revenue because they were making in before the approval of the EU regulation they were making uh, in good days 15 uh, dollars per person and that's a lot of money in the DRC. What happened in 2017 after the approval of the regulation was that um, European buyers left the country and uh, the only buyers that remain were the Chinese and the Lebanese. And because um, there was less demand uh, and the same level of, uh, of offer, basically the prices went down. And instead of making $15 per day, these people uh, were making $5 per day. And this is uh, much lower than what they were expecting. And in fact, uh, regulation that was approved with the best of intentions was, and is making in this part of the country, poor people even poorer. So the big question I think is, but did regulation work? So did it curb the, the, the extraction of conflict minerals? And unfortunately, the, the answer is no. What changed was the trade routes, uh, but uh, you still have armed groups controlling the extraction of minerals and making a profit from that, that they use to buy more weapons and to fuel the war. Um, if you want the, the take out of this experience, of this personal experience, is that if you try to make a regulation um, that will be implemented somewhere else in the planet, and if you do it from, let's say, uh, glass buildings in Brussels without having uh, real uh, uh, on-hand knowledge from the terrain, you might have unexpected results. And this was the case for me. So thank you for your time and attention.